Thanks for this. There's no way we could have done this at the B&B. Oh, I'm just glad I could help. So has this got anything to do with what you went to do yesterday? What's this? Um, I just went to try and plead Chez's case, but it's a waste of time and I weren't listening. Well, at least you gave it a go. She knows you fight in a corner. So how's it looking? Can you get her off? I need to read the files. Yep. You know the basics, right? I mean, you must have some idea. It doesn't work like that. Well, you've got Jimmy. He can tell the jury what Carl was like. It's helpful, but it's the whole picture we need. You're crucial to the case and to the chance of her freedom. I won't let her down. You can't think about that. All you need to do is be honest and stay focused. Because the prosecution is going to be all over you. They'll be firing questions and trying to trip you up. But as long as you stick to the facts, you'll be fine. I'll do my best. I'll be honest, we could do with an impartial witness. I mean, you might be seen to be biased, and Jimmy and Carl weren't the closest of brothers. Is there anyone else? Well, there's loads of people around here. Carl fell out with practically everyone. I don't mean people he argued with. We're saying he blackmailed and threatened chastity. What we need is anyone else he might have done that to. Anyone you can think of who'll get up in court and say that. And in Mrs. Spencer's defense, I will show you that, in fact, Carl King was obsessed with chastity, jealous and unable to move on. Full of remorse for her previous affair with Mr. Murray, she begged him not to ruin Debbie's relationship out of spite. She also feared the medical repercussions of upsetting her niece because this was no straightforward pregnancy. The child Debbie was carrying was not, in fact, Mr. Murray's. What's she trying to say? Shut up. The father of this child is Debbie's ex-partner, Andrew Sugden. And this unusual arrangement was unusual to... Unusual arrangement? She had that kid to save Sarah's life. Sit down and keep quiet. You confirmed to my learned friend your considerable experience as a forensic pathologist. And you told the court that the cause of death was blunt trauma from a heavy, forceful blow to the head. Yes, that's right. Is it possible to tell if Chastity Spencer struck out in self-defence? No. So you were also unable to determine if the defendant struck out with the clear intent to kill the victim. So it must follow that it is entirely possible that the defendant is telling the truth and that she merely intended to incapacitate Mr King long enough to effect her escape. Objection. Thank you. No more questions, Your Honour. That was quite a tale of mischief and mayhem, you told. I told the facts. Did you? Yep. Tell me the facts about the night Carl King attacked you. Pardon? Three years ago, almost exactly. Just before Christmas. You do remember. I know what you're talking about. But I wouldn't say he attacked me. I think you would if you were telling the truth which, in case you need reminding, you are under oath to do, Miss Dingle. I'm surprised you're playing down the ordeal, Miss Dingle, because that's what it was, wasn't it? And she told you this, yeah? You expect people to believe it? Do you expect people to believe what you said about Mrs Spencer? I'm not up for murder. No, not on this occasion. Mr Roberts. Apologies, Your Honour. There but the grace of God, though, wouldn't you say? The similarities are striking. Young, beautiful women, both of whom Carl King knew well. Both of whom had taken or had a hand in taking a substantial sum of money Objection, from him. Objection, Your Honour. The details Ms. of which Dingle's pertaining to Miss Dingle are not, not relevant, relevant in this Ms. case. And his method of attack was similar, wasn't it, Debbie? I can't say yes, because I wasn't attacked. So he didn't have you up against a wall, arm across your chest? Don't remember that. Really? Really. Memory a bit shaky? Must be, yeah. The difference is, I didn't kill him. The difference? So you were attacked? I never said that! It's what you strongly alluded to, albeit accidentally. And there was another difference, wasn't there, Debbie? No one came to Chastity's rescue as they did to yours. How do you think it might have ended if they hadn't? 
Chastity Spencer had to fight for her life against a man for whom this kind of attack was nothing new. And that is the only reason she's here. Uh, were you aware that Carl intended to start a new life with Chastity? That he'd gone so far as to buy the plane tickets? No. And I don't see why he'd think Chas would go with him. But you had noticed he was showing an interest in her again. Yes, about a, a week before. Uh, marriage to Dan, he was upset about it, but I wouldn't call it an interest. It was more like a, a fixation. I told him he should leave her alone and move on. And chastity was the source of friction between Carl and your father? Uh, I, 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 I believe so. You're not sure? I, I kept out of things between them. Did you ever see Carl physically fight with your father? Sometimes it came to blows, yes. But I have no reason to believe he had anything to do with his murder. No further questions. Do you believe Chastity is capable of planning murder? Okay. No. No way. She's not capable. She, she's... I've never met anyone more generous and caring. Carl was a psychopath. She was just trying to protect herself. Has she shown remorse for her actions? Yeah, yeah, of course. Every day. You know, every day she suffered because of what, what he did to her. Don't be fooled. Carl didn't love chastity. He was dangerously and irrationally obsessed with her. This was a man who was so unstable, he had convinced himself that despite persecuting the accused with cruel threats and blackmail, she would still come to love him. Who was so deluded, he had already bought plane tickets, believing that on the day she was marrying someone else, Chastity would run away with him to start a new life. We have also heard that this obsessional behavior led him to acts of violence in the past. That Chastity's own niece, Deborah Dingle, was perhaps lucky not to be a further victim of Carl's rage. Despite all this, the prosecution has tried to paint a picture of Carl as, in essence, a family man. Yet even by his own brother's admission, we have heard just how violent and cruel the real Carl could be. Chastity has freely admitted that she may have struck the blow that ended Carl's life. She will have to live with the guilt of that for the rest of her life. But this was no vicious, premeditated assault. It was the act of a desperate and frightened woman whose only crime was to fall in love with someone she shouldn't. I urge you to acquit her. <laughs>